Hello everyone, this is China Paradigm, where we, Dashi Consulting, interview seasoned entrepreneurs in China. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew David, the founder of Dashi Consulting and its podcast, China Paradigm. And joining me today is Sophie Sin, the founder and CEO of Travel Right. Travel Right is a company which will help you to get your money back when there is a problem with your travel. Um, and we are going to try to understand how the product is built. Is it an insurance product? Is it a product which helps to claim your rights toward those airlines and um, uh, any travel um, agents or, or intermediaries? Let's look at a few numbers. Um, what I didn't mention, but it is obvious that you are focusing on China. Uh, it is travelright.cn and we are, we we focus ourselves on China. So let's look at what it is um, to work in outbound uh, travel um, in China. We talk about a, a, a market which is not as big as what we could think of when we think about the 1.4 billion uh, people country, but which has been growing very, very fast, very steadily. And now we talk about 165 million outbound Travels, and that's a common mistake to to think of. Is that uh, we very often confused about travelers and travels. The, the statistics we talk about is travels. The number of travels is much lower. The number of Chinese having a passport to travel actually is still low compared to population. So the, there is a lot of room for growth. That's something uh, everyone is looking at. Even though with the current situation, uh, things are going to slow down certainly for 2020. Um, we. We talk about 35 million flight tickets uh, bought under the European Law Protection, and I'm talking about that, the European Law Protection, because um, that's where you are playing, Sophie. Uh, it's with protection of the consumers. So thanks for being with us, Sophie. You started a Travel Right two years ago, if my information is right. Previously, before you started Travel Right, you had been working at a very, very big company, very well known, called Alibaba uh, for three years. And that's something we will uh, look into is what you learn from uh, from Alibaba to start your business. So thanks, Sophie, for being with us. And first first question is what what, what, um, what is your company doing? Hi, Matthew. Thanks for um, giving the interview. Um, yeah, you are perfect right. You did a very deep research. Um, Travel Right is a bond for helping Chinese outbound travelers when they confront the very difficult situation like flight delay, flight cancellation, luggage lost. And, uh, you know, in China, like air passenger right is not obvious. No one aware of the, uh, they were protected. And even they know they don't understand how to fight for that. Um, my job is to Underst uh, to understand their difficulty and give them what they want. And the solution is very easy. If flight delayed, passenger just need to come to our website, travelride.cn, uh, file their claim, tell us what happened, and then they get money. So the procedure is very simple. Um, we de uh, they delegate uh, all the right to us to talking to the airlines. So they don't need to handle the hassle by themselves. And if our business model is very interesting. We don't charge anything until we get paid from airline. So passenger don't need to take the any risk. It is actually what I, what we say is a minimize the risk when you want to do a claim with airline. A lot of passenger actually try by themselves because they want to get a full compensation, but finally they come back to us. So. Um, I think the business is very interesting for the frequent travelers to Europe. Th thanks for the clarification. I, actually, I got a sense initially when I read, read, read what you do, travel right being an insurance company. But actually, it, I think it would be wrong to say that it's an insurance company. It's not insure tech. It's about um, the, the defense of the consumer. It's um, um, it's a, it's a, it's a company which actually helping consumers to apply their rights to claim for their rights to claim for for the money they, they, they can get back so what I, I understand is that people don't have to subscribe to anything uh, for for your service you, are you taking a commission on what they get back uh, what's your business model yeah you're right so uh, insure tag is uh, is a 
because we are in we have partner with insurance companies. That's why they call us, um, give us award a tip like insure tag. But um, in this product uh, today, we only charge the service fee when we win the case. Customer don't need to register anything in advance. I see. I see. So, what's your business model? How do you make money? Um, we yeah, it's just a、uh, successful fee model. Okay.、Uh, once a case win,、okay. we charge thirty percent as our service fee, thirty percent of their entire compensation. So, by example, if, if you your flight delayed, you file a claim, you didn't pay anything in advance, and when we get money from, by example, Air France for for your delay. And we take thirty percent key for us, and we give we transfer you the rest of the money. So you're getting seventy percent without making any effort. I see. I understand. So who who are you? Who do you define as your clients? Um, my clients obviously are delayed passengers. Okay. Uh, so who so, so people who are paying for your service you consider are people who actually you take the commission from, which are the clients.、Uh, in this environment, which is、um, travel, you have a lot of players. You have OTA, you have airlines, you have the insurance company, which are actually、uh, covering the cost sometimes,、uh, reimbursing travelers,、yeah. and that may be actually the the, the the companies you are you are contacting to get the money back. So. Would you would you mind、uh, telling us a bit more about、uh, this ecosystem and how you work with this ecosystem and your product? Sure. So,、um, as you know, in the travel industry、uh, in China, is totally different than outside of China. That's why a lot of European competitors they can't come to compete with us directly in China market easily.、Uh, the reason why is、uh, ecosystem is different. Uh, first of all,、uh, from the user behavior, we don't book a flight ticket direct with airline so often.、Um, most like more than seventy percent of flight was booked online by online travel agents on travel agents website.、Uh, so we call them OTA.、Um, and today, actually, we we partner with OTA to find the delayed, delayed customer, and that is our B two B two C model. Um, this model is very light landing, so we don't need to、um, invest mass- massively for the B two C markets,、uh, which is very very difficult to target the delayed cu- customer、uh, today in China. So the B two B two C is the best way to reach the、uh, uh, passengers, obviously. And in terms of the insurance,、uh, in the beginning we saw the insurance company will really surprised by this solution because what does they compensate? To customer when the flight delayed, you know it's not a lot of money because so much delay happened in China, and the compensation obviously is very little. So in China, if you buy a delay insurance, it cost you,、um, let's say, thirty、um, China yuan to two hundred up to two hundred China yuan. Two hundred China yuan is most for international delay, and that money we. If you if you delayed and the delay condition is very high, like more than four hours delay, five hours delay, depends company, depends offer, and you only get up to six hundred euro China yuan compensation.、Um, you know, compared to what you pay and what you get finally, and with all the conditions,、um, it's just discourage the passengers to protect themselves by their、um, delay insurance. But regardless, all those. The delay insurance is super popular in China because Chinese passenger well educated by the markets that delay happen every day, so they have a high chance to to travel out with a delayed flight. So they must buy the insurance to protect them. So once every time when we educate talking to the passengers, t- telling them that I, we have a solution, get your compensation, etc., they will only the first question they ask is how much I have to pay in advance. <laughs>、uh, You, I tell them no. We don't need to pay. You don't need to pay any advance. We are not insurance, and they are all surprised.、Um, so that's a yeah. Just a, you know,、uh, explain you what's the reaction for the passenger from the passengers or the、um, all the players in the markets.、Um, um, with the OTA,、um, are you how are you incent- incentivizing them? Are you sharing commission or it's an add-on for the clients so they are happy to to add you on their website and talk about you and mention you? How how is the cooperation? 
Um, uh, basically, OTA don't want to disturbing any passengers while the solution is not like valuable. So, uh, and they want to mi minimize their you know message pushing. So they they don't want they don't disturbing every people. Uh, they don't push message to everyone. Of course, we're only targeting the delayed passengers. And the delay have a condition. Okay. Of course, we want to targeting more than three hours delay because more than three hours delay, we have a high chance to get a compensation and uh, cancellation also. And we, then we will see uh, in depth what is uh, if that flight is uh, eligible or not. And in terms of the compensation for the uh, online travel agent, um, so far, most of OTA didn't take, uh, didn't asking for the money. The reason you cooperate with us is not for money initially. Now, so far, so um, some OTA even never discuss about a uh, compensation for their part uh, while working with us. It's, so the actually, I think the Chinese OTA have a huge competition between each other. That's why they want to build a unique service offer and value added service to their passengers. Um, I think that's the reason why they work with us. And plus we have a double culture. They both trust us, have a, a negotiation power and proficiency. Uh, all the, uh, we are professional uh, in terms of asking for the competition with airlines and they all trust us uh, by you know, send their customer to us because our customer service uh, in travel ride is perfect. You say that one of the first uh, OTA you worked with is Ctrip. Um, would you mind uh, sharing us how you can work with such a huge company when you start your business? If, if I'm correct, is, is it Ctrip? Yeah. So um, not only Ctrip, we work actually. Um, actually, I, I'm working most of the largest OTA so far. Um, the reason For why. Sense, e the so. Reason. The ones, the ones we know uh, are Elong, Ctrip, Skyscanner. Um, who, who else? Uh, uh, Skyscanner haven't w w work with us yet. So if anyone knows Skyscanner need needs, uh, come to reach us. Um, I think we are mostly okay. work with a uh, Chinese, is Chinese. Local based. Yeah, China local based. Okay. Um, let, let, let me explain you why. I understand a lot of people curious about that. Um, in China, first of all, um, every company startup. Because, you know, uh, digitalized life isn't really uh, start like uh, decades ago. It just started, you know, 10 years ago. And every company is just newly built. And because we understand every business have a day one. So um, we actually very um, open to all the startups. And sometimes, you know, when we are startups, we actually focus more on the customer needs because that's why startup exists. We, 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 we've discovered the new needs and then we give a shot. That's why large company actually appreciate the innovation and, uh, you know, service focused startup. And we are just right. The, what do they need? Uh, what do they want to partner with? And that's it. And I know in European country, um, working like in France, the startup need to be need to prepare for years, then be able to sign the large company like Expedia, mm, and as you know, like uh, Expedia, um, they of course like in the industry in China also we are the biggest one in the air competition service. I don't know other one, probably very tiny, um, and they also you know take look into our service quality how we handle their claim with other OTA. Um, so a lot of checkup by the big company, but finally they convinced by our service. I see. Does it mean that for every single sea trip traveler whose flight is delayed, they would actually be suggested to contact you and your company? Uh, not everyone. So it's only for the serious delay and uh, cancellation. So th those are the customer really need us and we don't want disturbing every passengers. But actually every passenger, when they fly to Europe, they should be aware of this regulation. Good. We understand now your product. Um, you are um, basically uh, uh, helping consumers to activate their own consumer rights uh, in Europe. 
uh, you're focusing on Europe and specifically for Chinese travelers. Yes. Is, is it correct? Yes, it's correct. Yeah. Talking about the size of the company, would you mind sharing a bit where, where you where you are in terms of development, in terms of team, offices, revenues, if you can share, number of clients. Uh, you started two years ago. Uh, you are not part of, uh, of China Accelerator. We'll talk about that later on. But what about the size of the company? Um, so my company, uh, we first registered in 2018. Mm, and that is the time when I, uh, five months right after I, re, uh, I resigned from Alibaba in France. Uh, so I was based in France before. So the initial team were recruiting in France. Um, and, um, yeah, we, we registered the company in Hong Kong also. And then we registered the company in China, uh, once SOSV decide uh, to invest in us. Um, so our team have, we have two teams. One is in France and another one is in, in, in Shanghai. And the, the team in Shanghai, because of all the OTA partnership, so we have most of people here. Um, here we have a, an airline relation team for the, for make sure all the claim, uh, get well communicated with different airlines in Europe and both in China and also in rest of Asia, because we not, we, we didn't only receive them, um, the claim from China, we also receive the claims from, uh, Asia, you know, rest of Asia. Um, and we have our customer service team, obviously. Um, though, uh, customer service, we don't recruit local Chinese. We actually local recruit international Chinese. So they both understand how to, uh, and how to handle the client and also talk to the client directly, understand their pain point and they are mostly have experienced travel abroad. So they understand the pain point. Um, so also customer can trust them easily. Um, another team is, uh, we call it BI team is business intelligence. Uh, the business intelligence, um, is very important in our business because once we, we handle, like if we handle 20 claims per day, it doesn't require a lot of automation and data support. But one, once we ha handle more than 200 per day, then that's something like really need to focus is automation and, um, uh, all the uh, data analysts, uh, data support, um, are very important for in our industry. Um, and also, um, so my BD team is only me. Um, so I, they don't call me CEO in the company. They call me a BD. <laughs> um, uh, I think, um, um, since I was working for Alibaba, so I understand what is big company need, who they trust to work with, what type of partners they are searching for if they want to work on this service. So I think since I perfectly understand um, their situation, their concern. That's why I can, you know, uh, let them trust us and move the first step. Yeah. So far, how many clients have you been, have you helping, helped get, get, get the claim back? Oh, we can't disclose this, um, this information because we signed, uh, obviously there is a one OTA we work a lot and we don't want to tell. And it's, it's not okay to tell because we signed the NDA for this part. Okay, got it. How how many do you estimate you could uh, uh, you could reach? What the size of the market? The number of uh, delayed flights or claims you could get? Do have you have you do you have an idea of that? Sure. Uh, so uh, obviously that's uh, something we need to verify in day one uh, as an entrepreneur. So um, we have a thirteen million Chinese travel to Europe, um, and among these thirteen, uh, there is a. 1.5 to 2 percent of flight series delayed and cancelled um and things uh between china and europe is mostly entitled to up to 600 euro compensation so the market is actually quite big um but we need really targeting the right passenger because it's not every chinese is gonna fly to europe <laughs> china is big yeah. Mm, and uh, yeah, that's and uh, the, the number in China is let's say it's the uh, same number as in similar number as um, as in Spain uh, in Italy, um, because we we are entitled to bigger competition and the number of travelers is 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 large enough, and uh, like the later uh, since we we can potentially build other OTA relation, 
We can also enter South Korea market and Japan market. Um, putting the South Korea market and Japan market together, um, it's it's actually uh past a half of China market. It's quite a, quite a big, and also Singapore, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong is very interesting for us. And it's a growing market. The thing is that the numbers from China are still low, as I was saying at the uh, at the introduction. Uh, but it's growing fast. It's yeah. low compared to the population, compared to the U.S. The penetration rate of of uh, traveling has um as um early early activity is still still very low in China, but growing growing rapidly and and uh, certainly one of the biggest markets in the in the coming decade. Um, so we talk about the product. Now we, we, we know what you do. Uh, we know how you do it as well. Uh, we understand your business is B two B two C, as you said. You 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 go through intermediaries to get known from from the user, and which is using your service and and gets seventy percent of the claim, and you keep thirty percent. Um, I like to talk more about how you discovered this opportunity. Uh, you said you were in France at the time, but how do you did you dig in and find out that that was something you could do and it would be relevant to do? Um, we're talking about European law. Uh, you don't have a background as a lawyer, for instance, to understand all of this. How did you come? How how did it come to you? Yeah, so I was a big traveler, and I love travel. And I think the travel experience experience for me is the most important in my life, and I want to protect it, and I want to keep it pleasant and less hassle. That's why I I think it's um, from my personal hobby and interests. Uh, one hundred percent, it makes sense for me to work in the travel industry and solve the pain point, especially because I saw a lot of uh, chi- uh, and since I'm Chinese and living abroad. I understand uh, what the Chinese feel when they travel outside of China. What they really need, um, and those make me thinking about okay, I need to go for um, a, build a startup to help people uh, solving the biggest pain points when they travel out of the out of China. So why Europe is because um, I was living there, and I understand better the ecosystem there. I can build a partnership easily there. Um, and things I while I was working in Alibaba, actually there is an interesting story. Um, we have a lot of Chinese, uh, you know, Chinese colleague travel from Hangzhou to, uh, to Paris, and they actually uh, everyone have a different story, and I think. Uh, the 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 most hassle happening in their air step one is air travel, and lost luggage, flight delay, cancellation, rebooking, all those are really, you know, disturbing people, and it can destroy entire journey. That's why I think uh, working on and I was working for Air Airbus for the flight uh, for the aircraft delivery project before. So for the air business. I don't think it's like mystery for me. For air business, it's very simple. Uh, we understand how they operate, how the airline operates, what's the most important thing for them, etc. So for me, um, solving the pinpoint in the air travel is quite interesting. So all putting things together, uh, I, I, and then I one day one of my friends in my network told me, "Hey, Sophie, I'm thinking about a." Uh, one idea, very long time. He presented idea to me. That is the idea in our pa- company. Actually, general. I, I mean, uh, sixty uh, percent is similar from like our business. And then I I check the comp- uh, competition. I check. Uh, I talk to the OTAs, and then I think, okay, there is a market. Let's do that. And so that's why this is our product number one. And doesn't mean we will stop here, um, because I think. Uh, since China tra- Chinese outbound travel uh, base is huge, it's like um uh one hundred um we have a thirteen uh thirteen million um in, is travel to Europe, but that is only um fifteen percent of entire um flight uh, outbound travelers, and we want to protect every passenger. And their rights 
and we want to not only compensate them after we want to help them if their flight delay or cancel they want to change reschedule and we want to also help them handle the luggage hustle and those are really important for for travelers let's say um this is just uh, in chinese we call it pao zhuan ying yu which means um this is just the product number one and we believe there is so many things we can do together with OTAs to help Chinese travelers and uh, traveling a better experience. I see. So I understand that you had a lot of people coming from Hangzhou, which is the headquarters of Alibaba, and you found out that they were very annoyed by the delays, uh, lost a lot, lo- loss of, of, of uh, luggage and so on. And as a traveler yourself, you knew that you could get uh, paid back a part of part of it. And uh, you saw there was an opportunity on it. Uh, I, I, I got it. Um, you said that you worked for Alibaba for more than three years. I went on your LinkedIn profile. I, I found out it was like two years. Two was years. Three, two, two years. years. Two years. Um, and in France, um, you you have been one of the first uh, to join Alibaba in France now, which is quite well established uh, and, and get a lot of visibility. Um, what did you learn at Alibaba, which helped you to start your business? I'm asking that because I see so many people on the profile to write uh, ex Facebook on the headline, you know, or ex um, ex Alibaba or ex uh, Google, and I'm always wondering how, why, and how uh, is working in, um, in, in in such a company, such a statement, as much as getting a degree, as much as is, is defining yourself because people use it to define themselves on, on LinkedIn. So what did you learn at Alibaba which could uh, now define yourself and has changed yourself to start this business? Yeah, I think different people getting different things in different experience. Uh, no matter Alibaba or Airbus, how long it work with and who I work with, which role I work with, I think if you have, um, uh, you know, uh, if you understand when you, what do you want to get, which value you want to contribute, and with those objectives, um, people can learn better than a lot of people. So people's learning skills are different. Um, I, I believe you agree with me. That's why I made us today. Um, in Alibaba, I think the valuable thing teach me is a cultural difference make huge difference. So, um, I think still, uh, Alibaba is not the best example, uh, to go abroad. Um, I think Huawei is, uh, Facebook is because they are, you know, Western cultural, uh, Amazon is, but not Alibaba yet. Um, the reason is because Chinese culture is very strong. Um, we have unique culture and that culture doesn't seem to really, you know, uh, work very well with European culture. And another thing is I found out China is big enough to make Alibaba, you know, grow very, uh, focus on China. They just focus in China, internal needs, they're already huge. Why not go abroad? So for them, like going outside of China, for me, it's not really something essential. Well, all those like make the Alibaba's decision organization are very unique than any other country. I see some pain points. I learn from that. And I think I want to build a company which is different. And the culture should be really um, international. Uh, that's why I think when I build a team in France, I recruit mostly Chinese, uh, Chinese people. And when I build a team in Shanghai, I recruit mostly uh, Western pe- Western mind, you know, uh, worker, and my team are very international today. And the cultural, let's say, we can both recruit in Chinese locally. We have a Chinese customer service lady who don't speak very well English in the beginning, and finally she she get along very well with every people in the team. So all those, I think, it's, um, um, I think we done very well uh, from learning by learning from Alibaba. I, uh, I am aware of the culture is really important in our, uh, in, in the business in our day one. And second thing I learned is, um, no matter big company, how big it is, how powerful it is, they need to understand local needs. The local needs means when you want servicing people from France, how, why, what they need. I think if you never live there, you will never understand. So putting 
yourself in the shoe of the travelers, international travelers in different country is really important. So what I understand now is that what you learn from Alibaba is that culture is actually um, a sizable um, part of business. So it's a sizable reason why you may fail or succeed in business, or you may have the idea, craft the idea, understand the idea, and play well with the idea, the initial idea. And actually, what you just said opened my eyes on, on a couple of things. I was always surprised how people who are not technical uh, developers would write on their LinkedIn profile, ex-Google or ex-Facebook, which are companies where uh, people will shine are technical people. But what they may have learned is a culture of organization, is a culture of innovation, which makes them different like uh, a new degree. So it, it gives me an understanding of why people uh, may state uh, so much uh, in on their profile Uh, the, um, the, 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 the company that I've been working with, especially it's a big one like Google, Facebook, or Alibaba. I'd like to talk about your funding. Uh, you joined Chan Accelerator uh, one year ago, soon one year ago, I think it's like 10, 10 months now, 9, 10 months, uh, and you got money from SOSV, uh, which is managed by w William Bao. Um, how does it work with Chan Accelerator and SOS SOSV? Could you tell us more? Okay, yeah. Um, so my country, my com first of all, my company wasn't like specially searching for funding. Uh, because we already established a big partnership in China and uh, obviously funding for us isn't a difficult uh, subject, uh, but we don't necessarily need to take the, uh, take the money. Still, I believe the founders will be able to earn their day one's uh, in team salary uh, will be the most important thing, the solid, the foundation of the company. So we don't need, a, actually in the market, there is so many startups Uh, need a funding, continuing funding, the, the founders working full time for funding to, you know, to be survive. Uh, we are not in the situation. And that why, that's why all the, um, uh, the investor who joined us love this point. So um, when I met William um, Bao Bin, uh, who is um, uh, the boss of uh, SOSV in China, he liked our idea and uh, my way to do business in day one. That's why the deal is very easy to close. And the reason why we choose them is also, uh, I can see um, uh, not only because William have a huge network, it's also because uh, the, the organization of uh, SOSV, China Accelerator in China, um, are very well organized. They actually have a long history of servicing a very, a different startups uh, in different uh, field and they have a strong partnership with large companies um, I think all in all I think we really build a good relation with them and the uh, last six months uh, so the program like it's a six months program uh, let's say three months intensive program and then another three months I actually come earlier to stay with them to understand how they work so I'm actually a founder um really arrived to stay stay in the same office with them like bef even before the batch start so we are batch 16 when batch 15 was was still there i already in the office and borrow a desk by that time i just moved from paris to to shanghai relocated and i'm alone and i need a friend team so they uh even they were servicing so for their batch 15 and um, my paper still haven't finalized with uh We with uh, with their team and they start to helping me out, uh, so I think it's um it's a team really generous to help. They do whatever they can, and they understand the startup pain point. They saw so many examples, so their effort. So we can avoid a lot of uh, stupid mistake um, by listening, or you know taking their advice, and also I think they um and they have a good. How to say they, they have a, a lunch and learn in fr every Friday with us, with different founders and key members in the team. Sometimes I ask my intern to join me so we understand how to work with them. So SVS, SOSV actually helped us a lot. 
and not only in turn uh, um, helping me kick off the business and also uh, give me some advice as a team leader what, what who we should recruit how we should train the team and then uh, not only rec- uh, and also most more importantly uh, manage financially the risk uh, so uh, my company uh, in day in day one i actually a uh, um, founder really save a lot of money for the company we we keep the low burn rate uh, in order to survive when there is a situation really turning very bad. So, by example, today uh, I was grateful for what we had, you know, realized in the day one. So we didn't really throw with the money like to the to the window. We uh, instead of that, we actually really careful for each cent how we spend and who we recruit. And the team also very very aware of the situation today. And that's why we can go through the difficult situation together. Um, and I don't know how long it will take for the uh, coronavirus period. Uh, seems, uh, China EU traffic is, uh, totally interrupt. Uh, I guess it would take at least three months to recover. Yeah. We, we are recording. Yeah. We're for, for people listening to us, um, later in the year, we are recording today. It's the uh, 18th of March, 2020. And um, Europe has uh, banned uh, any 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 travel uh, to the European Union from yesterday. Uh, so uh, it's in, I, I believe impacting specifically what you're doing because you're specifically working with European Union for one month. So it's it's the ban will last for one month. Uh, I don't think one month it will recover. Uh, as you can see, the um, the extension uh, China has already managed the coronavirus very well. It still take us one month and a half, uh, let's say two months, because it's still continuing. Uh, and the Wuhan will take uh, longer than that. That's why I think the situation in, like in Wuhan, Italy, um, the probably next step will be U.S. It will be really, really horrible. So I, I just, uh, um, we are worrying about that. Uh, because we are exactly in that business. Um, if so, I'm the person really hope Europe can manage it well. Otherwise, uh, we can only wait and see. Um, but I, I believe we are not the only one who uh, who is worrying. Um, no, no, no matter China com- Chinese company and uh, you know the it's an entire ecosystem bound together. A uh, one people bad and other people also, you know not be very well also how, how do you manage this crisis management um so how, how do you how do you do um, i think a, a topic which is really uh, useful to learn from currently is uh, the topic of crisis management um every entrepreneur is facing yeah. a uh, crisis every big company can face a current crisis and how to react to it uh, how to manage it so what, what's your take on that how, how how did you react and how do you manage it yeah, I, actually, when I start to before I start this business, I, I um my my fear or worry is bigger than the reality until coronavirus happened. So my company was running very well, uh, no matter in different perspective. We have small problems, but I fix immediately and make us a little bit stronger. In each time when we fix problems, but this time is different. This time is the inter- entire industry industry dis- uh, disrupt uh, interrupted, and so I I, th- I think this in, under this situation is really special. Um, so in first of all, the challenge number one is we work in distance, and while we work in distance, we have deliver uh the project uh the new website and we started we our sched we scheduled to to start partnership with C Trip like since first of February. But first of February everyone is off. So all those things um actually February this year is a most important year in most important months in my life in travel rights, you know, uh, since the, it's born. Um and under so many um, expectation. We were expecting that months come. We prepared a lot. And finally, we have to work from home. And all this happened. We were under shock in the beginning. But immediately, we realized how important we united in this moment because uh, each team realized, okay, we are a small team. So every people's performance will affect business. Um, so I think the, this, this sense of responsibility 
under the, the stress, and we can't.、Uh, we start to train ourselves to work in distance in in a high efficiency. So we succeed in in distance work. Even now, like I didn't realize a huge difference between working office and uh, uh, and in distance. And my team will restart office work. Obviously,、uh, tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow morning they will be all in office, but not me because I. Uh, I just returned from France since last week, so I need to stay fourteen days in my apartment.、Um, we we are in the same situation. I、uh, and another thing is, um, um, we actually deliver very good at the product. Uh, let's say if you can check our new website and compare with our previous website,、uh, the user experience. I went to your website. website. Yeah, so it, maybe you didn't went to the old、uh, our previous version. So we improved a lot. By regardless of in distance work, so my tech lead is in、uh, in Malaysia because he speaks in Chinese, but he he is based in Malaysia、uh, and he is New Zealand citizen,、uh, you know,、uh, citizen. And then he um, um and his team、uh, is based in Hangzhou and Shanghai. So like people really even even. You know, interacting with spread everywhere in the world. But fortunately, we are almost working in the same time zone. Um, so that's uh that's in distance work, and the next challenge is uh you know when we promise some people to be promoted, and when the crisis happened, and a lot of company actually fired people, <laughs> they have no choice if they want to survive, you know, um, but how to keep my promise and don't hurt、uh, my teams because my team everyone for me is pre- is is precious. Um, and everyone carry important load. I don't want miss anyone, uh, in this crisis. And in the day when the coronavirus happen, we don't know how how long it will last. But obviously, at least one month and a half. Um, so my estimation for China is accurate. Uh, we do promote all the team. Uh, that we prom we we realized our promise. And some of key member we give the share to let them join as a, you know a founding partner and some of them join the talent pool. So I really、uh, manage well the employees welfare and this under under、um, crisis and the founders still insist doing the things which was good for the team, which really cheer up a lot of people in the team.、Um, Uh, but in another hand,、uh, we have to face a reality.、Uh, since you know Europe start to、uh, to have a coronavirus,、uh, we realize the crisis is longer than we think. So in this mode moment, I I trust my team will also understand situation and willing to 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 do temporary sacrifice in terms of their revenue. You know all these、uh, in order to let the company survive. So I think you know the. Founder need to understand to give and take.、Um, this is very、um, Chinese and also I think it's fair universal philosophy.、Um, and another thing is I was grateful that we do we insisting low burn rate in the company. So we don't recruit if if we can manage by one people we don't recruit two. We only increase the number of the worker、uh, when the volume really coming. So、um, yeah, I'm not so aggressive,、uh, and which is right,、uh, because even before coronavirus, China economic is slowing down, and、uh, by end of the year, and also venture capital stop investing、uh, most of the startups, especially in early stage.、Um, so those are the things I I learned, and we were you know insisting to do doing the same thing. And also, I think the, now the capacity for the team to make a change is really important. Last week during our f-、uh, weekly meeting, the entire team we are talking about like how we bring the va-、uh, the the revenue to the company. Every people give give one or two three point, you know, to 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 think about that. And I found that team have a lot of idea actually how to pivot to、um, to bring the extra revenue. And I really appreciate that. It seems、uh, making a change is not only me; it's entire team together. So that's why yesterday I wrote on the, on the on my WeChat moment 
is that if your cash is not, you know, um, support you until the com as to the for the coming eight months, the entire team have to make a change together, and that change is not only about company changes, also personal revenue change, organization change, and someone even need to stand by and to wait the situation. It's just like company wait the situation. And then maybe rejoin the company again. So it's, it's, it's potentially happen. You know, a lot of things could happen and we can only make the choice by 10 B. Um, and don't afraid to talk about your fear to the team. Because if you don't talk about now and when they realize in the last moment, you're going to hurt someone. And I think, um, uh, sometimes we need to let people know in advance. And psychological preparation, all things. I'm not being very negative. Uh, actually, that's the only way to save a company to be survive to survive. And survival can it will be the the one to welcome the next up because while our life have up and down business also. So when it's down, you need, you, are, you we wish to aware if you can survive, you will be the person to welcome the up. So that's what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, th thanks for sharing your um, your management of the crisis. And um, I, what I understand is that your first focus was uh, on the team to make sure uh, there is a team cohesiveness and you stand all together. And the second move was, which is very interesting, uh, what kind of pivot we can do and uh, make sure everyone is contributing to a pivot or new product. So you. You actually uh, follow the typical crisis management uh, program, which is to make sure that everyone is on board first and secondly to see uh, what can be adapted in the product to, 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 to the current situation. So it, it, it's a very, very interesting um, uh, feedback you give to us. Um, in the document you sent to us talking about the team, you said that uh, you are running a daily debrief meeting. Uh, would you mind sharing a bit more about your management style? A daily debrief meeting looks like very much what EO, Entrepreneur Organization, and the book Scaling Up is, is teaching to entrepreneurs. Um, so uh, would you mind sharing more about your principles of management? Yeah, I told you, every people join the team, tell them, okay. Uh, and most of them, are, they are young people. So I was really lucky person to receive their Western style management in, my, in the day one of my career life. So I was educated by the Western, Western side um, management style. So, let, let, but I grew up in a Chinese Let's say my my family is running business, so I'm helping since I was young. I, I was uh, going to running with the suppliers who carry um, the merch merchant when I was six, uh, seven years old. That's crazy, right? But uh, I understand how my mom educate me and how she run business. It's very tough, um, but it's very real. So I understand both Chinese. Um, management style and the European management style but uh, compared to style personally I think we need to take both good side uh, let's say Western management style is mostly my company to conduct so um, in terms of the organization communication tool way we use Western mind Western side and in terms of the entrepreneurship spirits contribution united when the situation is difficult that's very chinese uh, because i think the in, in western side people are very self protection you know they, they self they protect themselves they have to do that they have a reason but in china we try to focus on the longer bigger picture and uh, sometimes we sacrifice why it's necessary but uh, finally why every people do the same thing a uh, situation can change, uh, you know, quicker um, to the positive, you know, situation. And then I think we need to take both sides. And also entrepreneurship. I really love Chinese entrepreneurship on my side. So the region where I grew up is Zhejiang province with where Alibaba was born, where all the small suppliers for Alibaba were born. So 
Um, where, where were you in Zhejiang? Where are you from? Wenzhou or? Uh, Taizhou, Taizhou. So, uh, Wenzhou is just the close to Taizhou. So, uh, we are like one hour and a half drive away. Um, and so in in my region, um, every business were running by the family, and we start from zero, zero, really zero, which means. Family putting money together to run, to support their relatives, to run their business and they trust them, they believe them and they passionate about what they do or maybe not, <laughs> but they trust a person and probably he's the most intelligent or hard worker. And, uh, zero Chinese sentence say, uh, uh, 白天当老板,晚上睡地板. It says like, in, during daytime, you're the boss, uh, but during the evening time, you are sling, sleeping on the floor. Uh, on the floor, on, and the, f- on yeah. the floor, yeah. Which oh, means yeah. For people listening to us, uh, who may not know the differences between different provinces, uh, Zhejiang is on the east coast and a very uh, commercially dynamic, uh, and with Wenzhou, um, which has a very very extent. Uh, um, uh, a huge diaspora um, in in France specifically, but uh, all over the world, and um, yeah, they are known in China for being uh, uh, business people. And indeed, there is this saying that I, I would prefer to sleep on the floor than uh, working for someone else. That's a bit the the mindset of people from Zhejiang and uh, and Wenzhou because Wenzhou is, is is very well known as a city of of uh, uh, small to medium entrepreneurs uh, in China. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So Wenzhou is very special. Let's say Wenzhou is um, is is really supports entrepreneurship. Uh, Taizhou is less. Let's say Taizhou still have a lot of corporate life. You know, uh, Wenzhou really. Let's say um, uh, people born to be a, want to be a boss. Uh, no matter they qualify or not, but you know it doesn't matter. Running a small business like uh, opening a restaurant is even better than a uh, uh, a corp any corporate life. So they were thinking in this side, but um, Taizhou and the rest of the region less. But uh, we are we are very reason we kind of um, aggressive um, to for the entrepreneur, but we don't really uh, overdo it. Um, so uh, what I want to say is not like I'm not type of people take want to take too much risk because the risk if is manageable then you should take it. So uh, for me, uh, which means that's as actually the roots why travel right insisting uh you know lower our burn rate uh as we know uh our mo- the money came from like very uh from the trust of the other people and my investors are all my best friends uh they not only understand my business but also understand me so i was I, i'm i'm very lucky person to have a very good uh in- investors uh on board and I will insi- I hope I can, you know, insist in doing the same thing so that the uh, entire organization funding can run in a health way. A lot of founders are tired in to, you know, talking to the investor, talking to their investor can take their entire day and that make trouble of yourself. So I'd rather to, to, to be modest and to, you know, welcome less investors. Uh, instead of welcome the wrong investors in the in, on board, uh, we are very cautious about that. Yeah. One last thing I like to talk about: we talk about the identity of coming from Taizhou and Zhejiang. There is another identity you are um, mentioning in 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 interviews and papers you have shared with us is to be a woman entrepreneur. Um, my my feeling is that if there is a country where you can express yourself as a woman and an entrepreneur, it's China because China has the highest number of uh, women female billionaires, and it seems that um, it's it it has been the case for many years or decades that uh, women are part of the economic life and. Um, uh, power positions, but how, how, what, what's your what's your take on this? Is it is, do, do you feel um, do you feel the same as I, I do, or do you feel China uh, still has progress to make? Matthew, you are perfect. You, you, you understand China very well. I, I can see. Uh, true, a woman entrepreneur in China is uh, you know is something. It's really um, it's popular. 
And I met a lot of women entrepreneur um, in in Shanghai. We have a, a lady who tech, you know, supports all the ladies in the tech industry, entrepreneurship. Um, and actually, I met my uh, William Baobin in Lady Who Tax events. <laughs> Look, so uh, and William uh, inv- believe in woman entrepreneur, uh, same as um, you know uh, male entrepreneur, and he is example to to invest in in, in women. And I I think the the root of uh, under you know to support women is we don't feel such huge difference. Between male and female, so that is basic understanding. In the family life, women take the leadership in in the big cities. Uh, that's normal. <laughs> in the you know local culture, women take leadership, and in a lot of foreigner company, because I don't want. So I will tell you like why. Probably I can find some 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 clue for you, like a lot of language school in in uh, back to my university life. Uh, it's a woman who study English major, French major. So women are good at foreigner language. And when the uh, foreigner company recruiting people, they recruiting people speak a good language, their own language. So they're recruiting mostly women. And women learn very open to their to their culture, very sensitive to culture. You can see Chinese women stay in Paris uh, more than male stay, you know. <laughs> So all these things make women um, learn the Western culture very quickly. And once you understand better the culture, you know how to deal with a person, how to deal with the people, and you take the leadership. So in a lot of, you can see in GE, a lot of big company, so women leadership, Sanofi, foreigner company, they have women leadership super strong. That, that would be the last questions on this topic. Um, I, I feel you, you have thought a lot about it. I'd like to dig a bit, a bit more. Uh, as far as I understand, there are two kinds of feminism. One feminism is, and I don't know if you, I, I don't know, if, I, I don't know if you like the word feminism, but there are two kinds of 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 what we call feminism. Uh, one is to say male and female are the same, so you need to treat the same way. Uh, there is no difference. Another kind of feminism is to say male and female are different. We are biologically different. Uh, so we have to be treated different, but equally. So to have access to e- equal opportunities and so on in all differences, because um, at some point, um, uh, women and men may have different um, constraints in life, uh, which could be biological or others, but it has to be respected the same way and valued the same way. What kind of feminism you believe uh, most uh, China is in? Uh, because, again, um, the place of women in business has been one of the obvious success of the development of China. Uh, but what kind of feminism do you believe it is? It is men and female are the same, we treat them same, exactly the same way, or uh, men and female are different, uh, but we make sure they have access to similar opportunities. Oh, yeah, I, I, think, I think I never think about that before you're asking me this question, because uh, rarely in China people ask, the, uh, is a man or woman the same? <laughs> That's mostly asked when we are in the school, like uh, your your father love you or your, your parents love you or your sister more or your brother more. So it's kind of a re- very remote question in China. But in France, I do ask a lot <laughs> as a woman entrepreneur, though I, I'm curious, like probably uh, never ask this question. Don't ask so much. But once there is a, wom- a woman uh, want to catch the opportunity, you shouldn't understand their shining point and their disadvantages like a male do. And, and I, I think Ch- Chinese is question less today is because they almost equal, I guess. Um, maybe I'm not so, you know, I came back, uh, I, I'm away for seven years in China. Um, probably it's not as what I saw today. Probably in one year later, you'll give me another interview. I will talk differently. But so far, I feel the so woman entrepreneur in China is mostly supported, uh, like, like female, like male do. So, 
uh, and also in terms of your type of, uh, you know, feminism. Um, let me see. I think men, the, um, uh, both men and women should access, of course, equal opportunity. Um, in different industry, like uh, the, the organization like Lady Who Tech is encouraging the ladies uh, in the tech business, in the tech field, uh, which is good. I think so, like people are different. And we can not only divide women and the uh, woman and the man. We should uh, every people is is different, so they have different skill. And we shouldn't say okay in legal team, uh, in in tech team, I need to recruit a man more than woman. Um, but from my company, I I found out like uh, man and woman are, are equal. They are all excellent. Um, but I intend to, um, and it's like uh, the offer decide. It's not me decide. I can't make any choice. I want, want, we, we just want to recruit the best people ever, uh, who fit the team, who, uh, who is motivated. That's very important because, um, skills can be trained, but the motivation we can change easily. So always pick the people who is most uh, motivate, mot- motivated. Um, Yes. Um, my my feeling is that China is more in the in the feminism of we are the same and and uh, male and female should be treated the same, and Western countries, Europe and and the U.S. maybe more in the second feminism. I I, I feel which is to say we need to de- we need to do positive action for women because they are not elected enough in politics. So we we force uh, politicians to choose one male and one female all the time to be elected or. Uh, we push them to to have access to certain responsibilities by um, uh, creating regulations and law, um, I, and that that's why I'm I, I'm all the more surprised how uh, it is it has advanced and been successful in China, uh, and how Simone de Beauvoir and the Second Sex uh, book is, is is famous and well known in China. That has been one of the surprises when I arrived in China ten years ago when I was studying in Peking University, how how popular she was and well known and respected. Uh, for for her feminism, um, so yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining. It was very interesting, uh, very challenging, very interesting. Uh, we are talking at a time which is very challenging for you, very challenging for a lot of uh, people, a lot of countries, a lot of companies. Um, as entrepreneurs, we all believe that it will be back on track uh, soon, uh, hopefully within two or three months, and. Um, I wish everyone is, is is staying safe. Thank you, Matthew, for the interview, and I'm happy to talk with you and share my experience. And hopefully, we can have another interview uh, after the crisis finish. <laughs> and and yes. I hope you stay safe with your team. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye, bye, everyone.